What's up guys, Derek, more plates, more dates, dot com. Today we're gonna to be talking about leg day nausea, feeling like puking after getting out of the squat rack or literally puking. Um, it's too bad I don't have the old video of me puking in the parking lot after leg day because uh, I don't know, maybe it'd be funny. Like, Actually, maybe it's a good thing I don't have it because it's kind of gross. But anyways, makes you nauseous, me too. I don't know if it's for how many people this happens to, if it's you know the majority or if it's the minority, but every time I do leg day, I get some severity of nauseousness. Why that is, it was kind of a mystery to me too. And this thread came up the other day that kind of piqued my interest and made me dig down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Leg day nausea. Holy fuck, dude. Does anyone else get bad <laughs> nausea on leg day? No matter what, I get a super upset stomach only on leg day. I've tried working out fasted, eating 30 minutes before workout, eating two to three hours before workout, nothing works. If I do eat before, it's super simple carbs that would never upset my stomach at any time unless I'm going to hit legs. Anyone else experienced this or found ways to combat it? So I commented, same thing happened to me, it happens to me all the time actually. I haven't tried many things to avoid it though, interesting topic for sure. This guy mentions that we use his Nigella Sativa, black cumin seed oil. Um, with three and a half percent thymoquinone, about two hours before before lifting, gets rid of it. I discovered this accidentally. Absolutely zero clue of the mechanism of action and why it works for me. But for me, it's definitely there. So this is, from what I recall, a PGD2 antagonist. So this is something that would be inhibiting like a prostaglandin response um, through B PGD2 agonism, which is something that is otherwise associated with hair loss. So hypothetically, I guess you could be avoiding some level of like vasoconstriction. Um, I'm not really sure to be honest. Like I know high doses, basically PGD2 and PGE2 are almost like yin and yang when it comes to like vasoconstriction, vasodilation. PGE2 is like mega dosed in pregnant chicks to make them literally like birth their baby. Um, and if you take a, like, even a minimal dose, you like get laxative effects, you can like shit yourself. <laughs> but PGD2 on the other hand is like the opposite. It's like the constrictive, vasoconstrictive effect as opposed to uh, PGE2, which is more like a relaxation. I don't even know if vasoconstrictive would be the appropriate terminology, but it's just like overall constrictive in certain tissues um, versus PGE2 is like relaxation and like promotes the bowel movements and shooting babies out of your goddamn vagina, apparently. Anyways, this guy, since starting VAR pre-workout, no matter what I eat before the workout, I get nausea on every leg day. Um, let's see, any pre-workout? Yeah, I take pre-workout, usually some shitty bucked up pre, but I've tried most pre's, including Gorilla, or just taking caffeine pills, drinking coffee, nothing seems to help. Have you tried not taking pre for leg day? It's weird that it's only leg day, but the caffeine may not be helping, just a thought. I'll try that out. Yeah, so obviously stims, anything like dopaminergic drugs oftentimes will cause a appetite suppressive effect too. So let's just say the worst case scenario, we're on something like fucking Adderall and you went to do leg day, like you probably have zero appetite going in and the leg day on top makes things even worse. So maybe this guy, from the stimulants he's taking, he's at some level of appetite suppression, the leg day stacked on top is, puts him into nausea territory. Certainly possible, because like for me, even when I took like Melanotan too, this is like traditionally a drug that is very well known for making you nauseous. But if I'm in a deep deficit at the same time and I'm like like really fucking hungry and I take Melanotan, it's almost like the nausea and there's like a spectrum of hunger whereby you're like satisfied, but anything above satisfied, you're like literally nauseated down to like starving. So it's like... <laughs> When you're hungry from dieting, you take melanotan and it induces nausea, you kind of like meet in the middle and you're just like not hungry. So it's a very potent appetite uh, suppressant actually too. This guy says, I always do a protein shake with four tablespoons of still cut oats, having one heaping teaspoon of natural peanut butter, one heaping teaspoon of cocoa oil, and one two third cup of wild blueberries. Blend on high for three minutes, add a blender bottle of ice, blend on low for one minute, let sit for 10 minutes and get most of the air out. Seems like a lot of fucking steps, dude. Um, blend on high for three. Add a blender of ice and blend on low. Okay, maybe not too many steps. I'm just fucking lazy when it comes to cooking. Do you do cardio? Leg day done right is more taxing than any other day, and if your endurance and conditioning is low, you can easily get sick. I have the same problem. I just do one compound, then calves twice a week. Train slightly harder than last time. My stomach hurts when I train abs. I get lightheaded from squatting and deadlifting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what the fuck? Have you tried Kratom? Don't overdo it and don't use it every day because you can build up a tolerance. But I like using around four grams of Kratom. <laughs> Dude, is this even a relevant comment? He's just like, I like using Kratom on leg day. 
It's like Kratom is an appetite suppressant. Like if anything, that would enhance the nausea in my opinion. It also dehydrates you. I don't like it pre-workout. I think it can be useful for some people potentially, although it's like a controversial compound. It is uh, like, I have a lot of friends who like really rely on it and it's quite useful for them. And there are a lot of people who rely on it for like pain management and whatnot too. But it's not something I would like recommend pre-workout necessarily. It has a very, very potent dehydrating effect. And at the same time, it is not something that's going to prevent nausea at all. Like it would potentially potentiate it, bro. So what was I thinking? I kind of dug in, just like racked my brain a bit, also dug into it a bit. And it seems like the most logical explanation I could come to is the amount of blood flow that is needed you know, in certain body parts, when you train your arms, you have a certain amount of blood that rushes to the muscle. Fucking hyperemia, bro. When you do your back, when you do your chest, like obviously the bigger body parts demand more, you know, substrate and fucking blood to rush to it to actually, you know, sat super saturate it. So with legs in particular, this is the biggest body part and the most like CNS taxing body part to work as well, seemingly. Um, depending on what, you know, if you do heavy fucking like crazy deadlifts too or not on back day or whatever. But anyways, legs is like, it requires like so much allocation of your body's like functional capacity to support like digestion and shit like that. It gets diverted all to your, um, whatever body part you're training. And if it's your legs, it demands like what you would assume to be way more of that than your other body parts because they're so large. In addition to that, the taxation of like the actual movements, like squatting is very, very, I don't know, like you're going up and down with super heavy weight and it's like almost bouncing on your back a little bit. Like when you get to the bottom of the rep and then you shoot up, you know, you try and explode out of the fucking hole after, you know, going ass to the grass and like prolapsing on the goddamn grass, you fucking blast up. And then you, uh, you, uh, you know, hit the top of the rep and it's like, you're going up and down with heavy weight on your back and almost causing a, you know, like, I don't know. It's not like a fucking amusement park ride, but it's causing some level of like stirring shit around and like going up and down, up and down when you're doing chest, when you're doing back, when you're doing whatever, I guess back potentially on deadlifts too. But I mean, most exercises, you're literally like stationary, like doing something with a movement or standing there, but with squats, you're literally going up and down, all the way down, all the way up with fucking hundreds of pounds on your back. Like I could see why that would, you know, be stressful and cause a lot of like shifting of things. Now for me, one of the ways this is confirmed um, is when I don't squat, is if I do like leg press only, or I do, um, I don't know, like if I take my squat out that day, cause I like run out of time or whatever, cause Again, we had up until like really fucking recently, like one hour time limits on workouts. And there were some days I would get in there late, only have like 35 minutes to 40 minutes and the squat racks taken. It's like, okay, well I'm not doing squats today. And those days I didn't do squats. Like ultimately I was doing, you know, lower overall volume, I guess. But I mean, at the same time, by the time I get to leg press on squats, after doing, you know, four sets of squats, I would be like wrecked. My stomach would be like in knots. I would feel nauseous. I would like not even want to talk. It would just be like not good. And then leg press would be like, eh, it, you know, a little bit, it's kind of nauseating a little bit, but not nearly as bad as squats. And then after leg press, my stomach basically like calms down as I do, you know, my other uh, exercises of the day because they're just not as, not as taxing evidently. They're not as like jostling. I'm not going up and down, like shaking my fucking, you know, everything on my body up and down with heavy ass weight. So for me, quick side tangent to bring you, well, maybe quick, hopefully, a note from our sponsors. I know this is not my, uh, my forte, you know, trying to do the shit quick, but I try to give the companies who sponsor me <laughs> their money's worth. And I hope, I try to iterate the information in a way that's educational and gets like absorbed rather than just be like, here's like seed, you know, go buy it. So this is seed, Symbiotic. I've been using this stuff for, I don't know, like a year or so at this point, um, I kind of, Honestly, time flies at this point, I don't even remember, but this is something that I heard about a long time ago, a few years ago, when I do my own research into stuff and I listen to podcasts and I try to educate myself in areas I'm not really familiar with. You know, gut health is something that I have been, uh, I don't know, trying to further my understanding of over the past few years. And one of the podcasts that really clicked with me was the one with the owner of this company. And he basically went into all the literature that supports the efficacy of his product, how it compares to other products in the industry, standard probiotic formulas created by companies that just pick, you know, random strains out of a hat. 
And to be honest, that's kind of what I was doing before when I was buying probiotics as kind of like, and why, like I kind of bought them just as an insurance policy. Like I can't actually say with absolute certainty that, you know, the support of my gut brain axis is going to make some like massive tangible difference. But what I do know is that leaky gut is very problematic. The uh, gut barrier integrity, very, very important. These are things I want to support. And it's kind of like a fail safe having something that has, you know, efficacy in humans with actual good data behind it is something that uh, um, seems worthwhile to me. And at the time I was very interested in this product because it had just launched, but it, was, it wasn't available in Canada. So it was kind of annoying because I was like still buying random like probiotics off iHerb and stuff like that. And then more, I don't know, maybe like two years ago or a year and a half ago or something like that, Leo from Super Physiological Man Podcast. If you guys have watched that, you're probably familiar with Leo and Steve. But anyways, he has battled with Crohn's his whole life and he was telling me about how he uses this too. And I was like, oh shit, like more people are using this product and uh, it's starting to like pick up traction and people I respect in the industry are like use it themselves and rely on it for uh, their probiotic, prebiotic needs. So for me, this was something I became interested in once I saw the first podcast and became increasingly interested over time. And then when I saw they started shipping to Canada, I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. So, and then after that, they actually reached out to me and wanted to sponsor the channel. So I was pretty on board. Now they've been a, one of the most prominent, if not the most prominent sponsor on the channel. So very, very grateful to them. And uh, very grateful to you guys who um, support the channel through purchasing stuff that I feature in my integrations and whatnot. And just, you know, dropping likes on the videos and whatnot. So what is it exactly? It's a Daily Symbiotic that is a pre and probiotic two-in-one capsule for gut health, like general health, not just gut health, but gut health, actual health, skin, and a bunch of other systemic benefits like gut barrier integrity, permeability, micronutrient assimilation. Like there are a lot of things that kind of go overlooked when it comes to gut health. Most people I think just assume it's, does your stool look like diarrhea or does it look like a good solid log or not? And you know, to be honest, that's like part, mostly what my understanding was too before I started looking into this stuff. But there is like definite interactions with the gut brain axis, um, satiety signaling, um, a lot of things that can like indirectly impact your health in a positive or negative way. Um, even like mood regulated by gut, you know, in some capacity, it's kind of interesting. Like this, stuff, this stuff's wild. I don't actually understand it very thoroughly myself, but I'm always trying to increase my knowledge bank essentially and learn more about stuff I'm un uneducated about. But ultimately I defer out to individuals who are like doing this for a living when I'm trying to do that. So that is kind of where I'm at on it and why I trust this product over the other ones that I was wasting, potentially wasting my money on. Like I don't actually know how useful they were. They were just like random fucking strains picked out of a hat essentially and thrown into a product that you'd see a fancy name like lactobacillus blah, blah, blah. And then you'd be like, oh, it like sounds fancy. It's probably, probably legit. <laughs> but you soon find out a lot of these companies really don't know what they're talking about either. Wild shit. So anyway, this is the one I trust and I've been using it for a while now. So it's 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains, first of its kind, and they're delivered sustainably each month. They have this glass jar that is infinitely refillable and they give you monthly refills and compostable, biodegradable, recyclable packaging. For me, again, like most of the benefits I mentioned, like that's kind of like why I use it. There are additional benefits above and beyond that. Like it has gastrointestinal health, supports digestive health, you maintain regularity, ease bloating and alleviate occasional constipation, gut barrier integrity, helps maintain healthy gut barrier function and integrity, gut immune function, supports healthy gut immune function and crosstalk between immune and intestinal cells, cardiovascular health, promotes heart health, supports healthy intestinal recycling of cholesterol and bile, dermatological health, supports healthy skin and micronutrient synthesis, supports folate, B9 production via intestinal synthesis and bioactive forms of folates, comprised of 53.6 billion active fluorescent units and utilizes a unique two-in-one Viacap delivery technology to ensure that the Capsule is protected against stomach acid and digestive en enzymes, bile salts, and actually makes it through transit to get delivered to the colon. So actually making it to the end of the small intestine without complete degradation and making it you know useless essentially. So for me, this is the thing I've been trusting and uh, they've been a super good sponsor of the channel. Very grateful for them to be uh, so consistently featuring on our stuff and like entrusting me to be a facilitator of like high quality scientific information because this is like a very very respected like science-based company so it's really cool for me to have these kind of companies you know get on a channel that is called like more blades more dates and kind of like you know like uh, realize that i have like you know some sort of 
I don't know, respectable information to impart on people about educating them about uh, improving their health or performance or anything of the nature. So again, very grateful to them for supporting me consistently. And for you guys, if you want to check them out, they're going to be in the link in the description below. You can get 15% off your first month supply of Seeds Daily Symbiotic using code Derek at checkout. Click the link in the description below to get started and back to our regularly scheduled programming. I think that's probably likely the main outcome is diverting blood flow away from, you know, digestive processes. In addition, like literally jostling your goddamn stomach around. Cause to me, it seems like squat is by far like the most nauseating exercise of all. Like if I don't do the squats, and I just go straight to leg press. If I do four sets of leg press, I'm like maybe one third of the nauseous level, the nauseated level, maybe a quarter, maybe even less than I am if I do four sets of squats. So. Like for me, that seems like pretty indicative of something. So what do you do? How do you fuel for your leg day without stressing out your, you know, GI, making it super upset and, uh, um, you know, running into these issues. Having intelligent peri-workout nutrition seems to be the main thing, I guess. Um, having things with uh, easily digestible, like the properties of it are easily digestible. So not having something that's gonna sit in your stomach while you have a shit ton of blood rushing to your legs probably a better idea to use something that has like a lower uh faster gastric emptying rate so for example peri workout i don't know if you guys have heard of the highly branched cyclic dextrin um carbohydrate powder this is something that was popularized probably by john meadows i don't know who else popularized that but he was the first one i saw really talking about using it in a peri workout scenario with essential amino acids and this is something he attributed a lot of his like later progress to he like kind of plateaued in the later the latter half of his career and then he ended up introducing peri workout nutrition i don't know what else he did if that was the only thing but he said it made like a very like an actual noticeable difference just by introducing like peri workout shakes essentially of eaas plus cyclic dextrin so you know a lot of companies including ours have come out with products like this um, like this is Gorilla Mode post workout and it contains, hopefully by the time you guys see this video, it's not sold out, but um, it should be in stock. Maybe when I post this video, it might not be in stock still, but hopefully some people seeing this video in like weeks or months from now, um, it's in stock, but basically this is a formula designed around cluster dextrin. So this is the HBCD, highly branched cyclic dextrin that is, uh, has a very low osmolarity has a uh, very, very high fast gastric emptying. So ultimately it gets uh, digested and assimilated a lot easier and uh, quicker than something like if you had fucking, I don't know, oatmeal pre-workout versus if you had your HBCD peri-workout with essential amino acids or something rather than, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, whey protein concentrate in your oatmeal, something that you might've otherwise had another time of day may not be as uh, useful in the pre-workout scenario and may otherwise sit in your gut and bounce around while you're squatting and cause enhanced levels of nausea. So in general, I guess the guy who would even get nauseous when he's, you know, on when he's fasted, you know, probably, I don't know, like you can only do so much. But one thing I can say is individuals who are getting the stomach distress from lack of, I don't know, diversion of di digestion, essentially, digestion, digestion <laughs> during your fucking workout because you're brushing so much, taking such an allocation in your in the legs that would otherwise potentially be allocated towards digesting food um, and assimilating nutrients. This is something that is far more easily assimilated and does not require a significant like resource bank essentially to make useful and can actually be like go towards enhancing your workout and preventing the um, ca catabolic actions of your workout, preventing yourself from getting into as deep of a hole like john meadows would always say instead of letting yourself like get into a deep hole like why not like prevent your hole from getting as deep and then you're just like you know you're like recovering during the workout essentially or like preventing as bad of breakdown so there's definitely like an interesting debate around that by the way but ultimately if you're going to i don't know if you've been having issues i would recommend altering your um peri workout nutrition to things that are more um, well tolerated and are digested easier, things that are less complex um, and certainly not having like copious amounts of like fats with complex carbs and shit. Um, but in addition to that, if you're looking for a peri workout shake to, you know, fuel your workouts, that's simply like low osmolarity, 
fast gastric emptying, very well tolerated carbohydrate source. Um, cluster dextrin is definitely a good um, ingredient in my opinion. Um, it's not something that's you know super necessary or whatever, but I mean, if you're experiencing GI distress on squats and you otherwise need, like I don't know about you, but my workouts fasted are not as good as when I have at least a meal in my system. So um, if you need some sort of like peri-workout nutrition and carbohydrate source, I would recommend, you know, giving it a shot. And you know, the EAA cluster dextrin combo seems to be reasonably like well reinforced by a lot of top pros at this point too. So it's definitely worth trying out at least, I would say. You know, John Meadows spoke very highly of it and I think he was a um, guy who would never like steer you the wrong way intentionally, you know, to make, I don't know, enhance the claims of the product or blow it up into some big thing that it's not. So that was kind of why I took it so seriously personally as well as uh, um, the validity of some of his statements around, you know, not digging yourself as deep of a hole, blah, blah, blah. Like ultimately for me, it's about uh, like when I wake up, I'm not even hungry. So if I need something to be in my system for fast digesting, low stress, fuel my workout, like I will use the gorilla mode post workout, like pre slash intra workout oftentimes. Um, so even though it's marketed as a post workout, like it's easily an intra product as well. Um, so just a heads up on that. If you're, you can also buy clustered extra and totally separately, probably on like in bulk on Amazon or some shit. So you can check it out, but that is ultimately what I think the most well tolerated carbohydrate source is in a peri workout setting. I would not recommend replacing your carbs and your actual meals and whatnot with this powder, obviously, but I mean, peri workout to get that kind of like carbohydrate substrate ready to roll and get something into your body quick that is assimilated easily and will fuel your workouts. I think it is definitely a viable option for a lot of guys. And um, I don't know, just like maybe go slower on the squats, don't bounce as much. Like, I don't really know what the answer is, but for me, that was what I speculated as far as the mechanism by which it's occurring. Uh, maybe I'll try the uh, Nigella Sativa thing. I don't know, but I mean, um, it definitely is annoying, you know, doing the, getting nauseous and shit during the workouts. And uh, that would be my recommendation to try and attenuate it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Has this happened to you? Have you found any unique strategies that are useful for getting rid of it? Um, any and all comments, they'll be algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplacemortates.com. Follow my Instagram, at moreplacemortates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my preventative medicine hormone replacement therapy platform where we connect you with high quality medical providers to create your own individualized protocol based on your current needs and your diagnostics. And that protocol may involve just, you know, lifestyle changes, diet manipulations, et cetera, or pharmacology if warranted. But in general, we are a um, company that prides ourselves on elaborate lab panels, high sensitivity testing, and uh, educating the patients about their current status. And then they can decide from there, you know, how to move forward, what's appropriate, stuff like that. So if you want a high quality doctor in your camp, um, you can check out Merrick Health, linked in the description below as well. Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, I designed myself from scratch. And anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.